When growing up, Simon Agdestein was the big star in Nordic chess. Him and uh, Kurt Hansen had a big rivalry, and uh, Kurt Hansen was the sort of uh, the shy uh, guy that had that was winning European Championship and uh, and World Championship for juniors. But Simon Agdestein was at some point uh, the best player in in the in the North. Uh, uh, well, he was also fighting a little bit with Hatasan from Iceland, but he was always a very cool guy because he was both a strong grandmaster. He was, but he was also uh, at some point on the Norwegian football uh, national team, and so he was a very strong footballer as well. He, I think, he got a knee injury and, and had to end his career. Uh, and uh, later on, uh, he's of course been known as the guy who taught um, Magnus Carlsen a lot about chess. And I think we can. Carlsen can uh, tribute uh, Mac, uh, Seaman for becoming such a good sportsman, such a big athlete, uh, realizing the potential in having a better physique than the opponents. Because Agastein has always been sort of an energy player, just keep going, 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 going. Um, anyway, he was a he was a big star uh, back then, and of course he's also been uh, dancing with the stars. I think in, in in Norwegian TV and so on. And I think he's sort of a Norwegian Renaissance man, sort of a sporty, uh, smart guy that could do anything like a modern Michelangelo. Anyway, I played him in 1999. I was a little bit afraid of him, uh, but it was a very important game in the Nordic Visa Grand Prix. I came second in that tournament, uh, and uh, yeah. but I, on the way I beat uh, Simon Agdestein in a nice game uh, that I would like to show you here in playing the legends. I am white, and I open with e4. And I think he liked to play some sort of Svesnikov or something. And, and I prepared something like this. Back then, we didn't use computer much. It was 99. And uh, of course, we did use computer, but it was not nearly as much as it is now. And this is known as the best move. And this is interesting move. Um, just uh, kicking this, this knight before it, uh, it can jump anywhere. And this is normal. And um, and we can say that white has given up the bishop pair for almost nothing, but black is uh, is having some problems getting his pieces out, and we do have an advanced knight here, so maybe we can exploit that immediately with knight g5, and that and also I like the move because it looks so funny to to go with the knight here and the the knight here sort of, and of course white has a, a huge threat, uh, queen f3 winning something, uh, and it can be very tricky uh, for, for black, these kind of positions. So he should be really, really, really careful uh, what he, he does uh, right now. Uh, and sometimes you can even give a check on d6 and so on. So this is uh, tricky stuff. f5 is, uh, is, is known as one of the better moves for black. And a castle, and he kicks the knight. You could argue for something like g6 is better maybe just to get ready to, to develop the, the pieces. But a6, getting rid of the, the stupid knight. If he does not get rid of it, then I would probably play something like this, and then it will not go to c3, but it will go to d6 <laughs> with, uh, with check, and that uh, will be uh, pretty unpleasant for, for black. So now it has to go back. And an important moment in the game, what to do here? Yes, exactly. It, this structure is not good, but the D file could be important. And this structure is much better um, it's because it's much more sort of uh, stiff uh, with the bishop against the bishop pair. Um, and he played e6, all natural. So we could say that we have this one against this one, and then we have two black, black squared bishops. Please notice that black cannot play uh, h6 because of, of this move, mating in two moves. So that's also the, the idea behind queen f3. Just getting uh, the pieces out, also preventing uh, the b-pawn from moving and getting ready to, to go to the king side where the action for hopefully will take place because due to this pawn, white has more space on the king side. G6, and here it's all very natural moves. 
And please notice on, on G6, you just take on E6. You can calculate that. B6, H4, kind of nice move. Sometimes you will like to get this one in, and but it's also nice to have uh, air for the king. That's always, always nice. Bishop B7, Rook D1, threatening here. He has to move. Queen 7, Bishop F4 also makes a lot of sense. Um, here he has to be uh, be careful what he does. And one of the tricks is that his bishop is here, so he cannot. I think he had prepared h6 here, uh, which but that loses to this move. This is something you always have to be careful about. Check and. He cannot move uh, into to this check, so he has to do this, and then comes simply something like uh, this, and winning. Uh, so that was uh, the small tricks um, I was preparing. But here is you probably play something like this. The bishop belongs here to cover uh, this this pawn, and black is probably fine. Uh, he will he's going to uh, to get ready to castle. Uh, he's going to play something like h6 and rook g8. Instead, he played queen c6, um, setting up a battery uh, towards d2. So don't move this <laughs> too far away right now. But it's it's not really uh, effective. His, his big problem is that he can't castle. Um, he would love to, to castle here, but th that runs into this move. And I'm hitting uh, this with a, with a nasty pin. Winning. So he has to, to wait until he's ready. And I go back here um, and, and, this, and getting my bishop in to, to the game. And this bishop's going to be uh, sitting really nice on this square. Uh, something like this is, is clearly in White's advantage. It's very diff easy to play around this one. And he will lose this square, which would be really annoying for him uh, to, to the black rook. So uh, keep trying. Uh, by the way, it's also logical to try and keep the bishop pair when you have it. Uh, but this is is a little bit annoying because I'm just gonna gang up on on this pawn here. Um, and here he had to to take my play uh, seriously and play his queen back and put his bishop there. And uh, I think white should be better, but it's not much. And uh, and we'll have a, a full blown game. He played h6, and that's a mistake. Uh, it looks very natural, play h6 and d5, and uh, having all these things going for the d2 square, but there's nothing to see there. And after this move, white has uh, could take on d5, but I'm not I'm not into taking stuff like that uh, if I can avoid it. Uh, that's it's gonna be too messy. It's probably be good, but the this move I like better. And the reason why I like this move here is due to the fact that this bishop is here. Uh, that really helps a lot to by taking away this square from uh, the, the black rooks. So the black rooks are sitting uh, like this, not being able to do anything. And, and this doesn't change anything. And by the way, I kind of like, uh, I'm always seeing ghosts when, when there are threats around my king. And I kind of like that I have this, this double <laughs> cover now. So nothing nothing to see here. And he has to take. And uh, and as a rule of thumb, uh, two rooks are uh, is just as good as a queen and a pawn. That's, uh, but, but another thing that's very important is what we call coordination. And black has very bad coordination due to these rooks again. They are really not in the game, and they will have very difficult time getting into the game. Whilst my queen is pretty strong, and it will be able to 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 annoy him a, a lot of places. Also, my position is rather solid, and his king will probably be bad. So this position is more or less already winning for white. Getting the knight into the game is just coming to a nasty square near you. 
and and uh, by the way other moves that's that's coming is something like this and uh, uh, just to make sure that this will, will will disappear if he tries to exchange the black square bishop c4 makes sense getting ready for this but it's also um but it's not sitting comfortable b4 kind of nice kind of liked it and well um, he has to take probably and I take back with this pawn making sure I have one more extra here and ready to open some files b5 opening up an escape square for the bishop but also creating a new weakness here on b5 check and here we see why I'm so happy that my queen is uh, and my bishop is here because it's it, if he if black control the d file uh, if he ever gets to control the d file he will be uh, getting serious counterplay king c8 and black has a threat now can you see what it is it's very important to see it because if you don't see it then you have problems this move right this move is is a, is a serious threat due to this pin and we will not be happy if it gets that in so just king f1 and ready to meet d3 with f3 uh, just avoiding any kind of nonsense anywhere here uh, so he moves back but also yielding this square so i immediately jump in threatening to take this one bishop c7 we see five there's a, a pin down on this file and here he blunders with this move and i return the blunder can you see how white can win here immediately That was kind of kind of bad. I didn't see that, but I was. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes these kind of things can be difficult to see. Uh, White could have won with <laughs> this move, which is uh, is not only threatening the rook but also threatening uh, the bishop. And and if he just goes, uh, then just something like this, and poof, and poof, it's all over, right? So um, so c4 is a mistake. But it's of course winning as well. Uh, I'm just opening files over here, uh, weakening his his position further. Rook f7. He okay. He's finally managing to get one of his rook active, but it costs a lot of pawn uh, pawns. And I have this pawn going. Uh, he will not be able to do anything serious against my king. It's it is still rather safe. And a4 all. Ready for he can't move the rook due to uh, to this one is hanging. E5, just push, 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 and finally one of the rooks is ready to become active. I'd threaten this again and getting the king out, controlling that square, controlling that square, controlling that square, controlling that square. So no uh, counterplay for you, sir. Bishop b7, getting ready to maybe get some counterplay here, but just back again, and again, annoying with the pin. a6, taking that square and getting one pawn closer to the king. And here I decided, okay, I will not let you sit on this square because you're running out of... Um, of squares, and here... <laughs> um, and here I find I realized okay this this one was so good but at the moment it's starting to not be able to do so much while this is of course amazing it's sitting here and it's covering a lot of squares so it's just like a big bad spider so here comes a strong move by white h5 getting ready to uh, to do this Doof. and uh, pushing here it just comes like this and we exchange these these two, and yeah, well, the rest is is actually kind of pointless. Uh, I'm I'm having way too much fun here. Um, now you can't cover this one. Trying to get some sort of counterplay. The problem is that the knight is is way too strong. Hoping to to get something going somewhere. A7 getting ready for this one. Oops. Um, and rook here, check, 
with the idea this is a known trick like this and you can't take due to the pin and unk, and winning a rook he has to take otherwise he will get mated with the queen some like uh, this is made immediately like this uh, but and something like this is made in two after queen d6 and queen d7 so let's just go check and checkmate so he has to take and um, and he resigned other and and here of course this is totally hopeless so that was a, a game against the, the legendary Simon Achterstein from Norway uh, one of the best players in, in Norway but then came <laughs> Magnus Carlsen but I think uh, Simon has some of the um, can take some of the credits for for that Magnus became at least such a good sports or athlete uh, this was DM Talks. Thank you for watching.